Hello, everyone, and welcome to another webinar episode. My name is Michelle Hu, and I'm an education solutions trainer here at VSonic. And previously, I was an English teacher in Taiwan. Um, today, I'm going to be showing you how to create interactive elements inside of our MyViewboard whiteboard, and more specifically, our whiteboard for Windows software. We also have an Android and an online version. So first off, I have a question for you. Um, if you have been paying attention to previous webinar episodes, where can you find the 3D dice? Where can you find the 3D dice? If you know the answer, type it into the webinar chat. Okay, well for today, I'm gonna to be showing you another place where you can find the 3D dice, right here. And somebody typed it in there correct. It is normally the magic box, but I'll show you another place where you can find it today. So for today, I'm gonna to be doing a demo lesson, and then I'll show you how you can create the interactive elements for yourself. And the topic for today will be about money. So more specifically about counting money. And to do that, we're gonna do a bit of a choose your own adventure and we're gonna go shopping. So the first thing I want you to do is to pick a store. What store would you like to go shopping at? Do you want to go to the number one, the candy store or number two, the stationary store? So type it into the webinar chat. Which one would you like to go to? Number one, the candy store or to the stationary store. Okay, one, two, one, two, stationary store. Okay. Ah, it looks like it's a tie. The next one will be the tiebreaker. Anybody? Two. Okay, so we'll we'll go to the uh Tie again. Oh, no, no. Okay. So, number two, then stationary store. All right, let's go to the stationary store. So, I can just go like that and let's go to the stationary store. And if I click on the picture, then I can actually go to the hyperlink to go directly to the stationary store. So, now that we're at the stationary store, which item at the stationery store would you like to buy? Number one, little stamp markers. Two, um, the really cute toaster and they're also a USB drive. Or number three, a watermelon pencil sharpener. Which one would you like to buy? But first, in order to buy it, we need some money. And for this, we can use a dollar and some dimes. And if you're teaching this in your class, you can use um, the other coins also, but to simplify it today, we're just gonna use the dollar and dimes. And let's see what everybody chose. Two, one, 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 two, two, one. Okay, it looks like a number one. Okay, so we're gonna buy some markers today. And if I click on here, I can do a hyperlink to find out what the cost is. So the cost is $2.20, $2.20. And then now for the interactive elements of the dollar and the dimes, um, if you have an interactive flat panel like a view board, you can have your students come up to the board and then they can actually move the dollar and the dimes to do the counting. So $2.00 and 20 cents. And now you can buy your stamp markers. Yay. Okay, now that you've made your purchase of your cute little stamp markers, now um, you only have 50 cents left. So what else would you like to buy? So first off, you have to see which ones are less than 50 cents. And for this, you can also have your students come up to the board and they can actually drag and drop um, to the little box, which ones are less than 50 cents. So the ones that are less than 50 cents are number one, number two, 
and number four. So then the students can just come up to the board and then they can just move the ones that are less than 50 cents like this. Two and number four. And the other thing is they can also move the dimes and then come up to the board to do that. So maybe with the 50 cents that they have left over, they can purchase the pins and the clip. So as you can see, using the whiteboard for windows, you can create a lot of different interactive elements that students can use on the board. And now that I've shown you some of those different things, I'm gonna show you the different tools that you're gonna be using to be able to recreate it yourself. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over here and then it'll have a hyperlink to the page to show you the different tools. So the different tools that I used today was the infinite copy, color remove, and the link tool. Sure right here. So infinite copy looks like this, the link tool is this, and the color remove tool is this. And this is all from the adorning menu. So when you click on a image or a text, uh, this adorning menu will pop up and there's different tools inside of it. So the cool thing is if once you highlight over the tool, it will show you what it is. It has a little text to show you what it is. And the first one that I'll show you is the infinite copy. So for that, I'm gonna go into the magic box right here and then show you how I made an infinite copy of the dollar bills. So first, all I did was go into the magic box and I did an image search for dollar bill. And these are copyright free, so you can use these freely, which is a cool thing about the image search inside of the magic box. So you can just drag and drop a dollar bill onto the canvas and resize it however you'd like. And as you can see, once I click on that dollar bill image, this adorning menu pops up and I'm gonna click on the infinite copy, which is right here. And then now I can make infinite copies of dollar bills. If only we think we could do that in real life, right? <laughs> Just make infinite copy of money. Okay, the cool thing is um, we can do that in our whiteboard for Windows. And that is the infinite copy. And now I'm gonna show you the color remove tool right here. So I'll go back into the magic box and then I'm gonna go into the images. And this time I'll search for the candies. So this one right here is the one that I use and I just drag and dropped it onto the canvas. You can resize it. And I wanted to choose the different candies inside of here. So all I did was I went into the screenshot tool right here. And I did a rectangular screenshot of the candies that I wanted. Like so. And as you can see with this candy, when you move it around, it doesn't look as nice because it has that white background. So that's where the color remove tool comes in. Once you click on that picture, over here is the color remove tool. It looks like this. And when you click on it, and then you click on the background color, like that it actually removes the white background. And then you can just press the check mark to make sure that it saves that way. So remember to click the check mark. And then as you can see, the white background is completely removed. And you can use this for many different things, anything with a background color. And you wanna try to keep it, um, if it has the same background color, for example, like black or white or red, uh, the cleaner it is um, that it has only one color, the easier it is to remove that background color. And then you have that interactive element that you can use in your classes. 
and that is the color move tool. For the third one, we'll go into the link tool. So for any text or image, you can actually create a hyperlink on it. And I'll show you how you can do that. So once you click on the image, you can go over here. It looks like this. And that is the link tool. For the link tool, you can create a hyperlink um, to a file. So for example, previously when I had the little girl, it has a yay that popped out. That was a picture file that I had inside of my local hard drive. Um, you can also create a hyperlink to a website, which is useful. Um, you can also create a hyperlink to text. So previously when I had the prices pop up, uh, that was a hyperlink to a text string. You can hyperlink to audio and you can hyperlink to different pages inside of the slides. So you can go to a different page number and you can use that, for example, if you have a table of contents and you want to go to a certain page, then you can do that using the hyperlink or you can do it how I did it, where if you want to do a choose your own adventure with your students, you can hyperlink to different pages inside of your slides. And last but not least, if you want to hyperlink to different tools, uh, for example, a clock, countdown, ruler, protractor, calculator, and the one that I showed you in the very beginning of the lesson, the 3D dice, you can do that using this. So you can just choose what you want to hyperlink to, and then choose this hyperlink button right here. And then as you can see, the hyperlink allows you to let those things pop up. So you'll see that little 3D dice right there, and then you can just click on it and it'll pop up to use in your lesson. And if you want to remove the hyperlink, you just click on the image or text again, and then go back into that link tool. And you click the one where the link is broken and it'll unlink the hyperlink. And then now it's just a regular image. So these are the different tools that you can use to create some interactive elements in your classes. So I'm curious, um, which ones, what kind of things would you do using these three tools in your classes? Type it into the webinar chat. How can you use these different tools? And now let me show you another way we can use it. For example, um, I know when I was younger, we used these different tens and ones counting blocks in our classes. So if you want to create this interactive element yourself in your classes, you can go into the screenshot tool, particular screenshot, and you can take a screenshot of this 10 block. And as you can see, because of the white background, it's not as clean. So all you have to do is go into that color move, remove the background color, check the check mark box, and you can do an infinite copy to copy more of them. Oh, and then if you want to remove that, see like I have that little thing, you can crop it so you can remove that. So let me see. And now I can do an infinite copy of this. So then you have infinite copies of these counter blocks that you can use in your classes. And you can do that for the ones blocks or hundred blocks. And you just have to find an image for it. And you can use this for many different classes too, depending on what you would like to color remove or do infinite copies of. Okay, so some answers are for concepts. Yeah, this, this is really cool tools to use for concepts. They can use this with math questions. We should think my teachers could use this with math questions, and they'd already have the resources link for them to manipulate. Yep, definitely. For any math questions or anything that you want, you can use these tools. So it's a really handy for infinite copy, color remove, and the link tool. Okay, and if you have any questions, um, you can type it into the webinar chat. Um, anything that you would like to know more about.
Okay. Well, if there's no questions, uh, thank you for everyone for joining the webinar. And next time we'll be talking about uh, my view board originals. So as you can see, all these different backgrounds that I used, um, that's actually from my view board originals. So it makes lesson planning a lot easier to do. Can you animate objects? Um, it depends on what you mean by animate objects. Uh, one of the things that you can do is when you click on it, you can make it spin. I'm not sure if you mean by that. Um, and another thing is uh, we also have the fade in, fade out tool. So for example, this right here, you can choose the fading animation tool and it allows you to fade out or fade in an object. So let's say you want this to fade out. You can choose the speed of the fade out. And then when you choose the present button right here, you can click on it and it fades out. And you can also have things fade in. For example, if you want this text to fade in, you just click on the fading animation tool again. And you can move this to make it fade in. So this is the fade out tool and this is the fade in tool. So I'm not sure if that's what you meant, but those are um, two ways that you can animate uh, objects or text is you can have them fade in or fade out. And that would be used directly here um, to pr the present mode in order to do it. And then in the adorning menu right here, the fading animation tool. And you can use this for many different things. For example, if you want the text to fade in, or you can even do it to create a, um, like a matching game. You can have uh, different things fade in and fade out to show that. Let me show you an example of that. Let's say you have an image like this, yay. You can just drag and drop an image onto the canvas um, and create a, let's create a box on top of it. And now for the fading animation, you can actually make it fade in and fade out. And when you press the play button, oh, in the select tool, see so you can make it fade in and fade out. So you can use this uh, if you wanna do a matching game with your students and you can put different things underneath the boxes and then you can click on it to fade in and fade out. So that's one of the ways that you can animate objects inside of our whiteboard for Windows. Any other questions? Okay, um, in that case, uh, thank you for joining us for the webinar today. Oh yeah, so simple and yet so useful. Great, I'm so glad that you guys liked it today for the different um, tools that we used. And yes, there will be a recording of this. Um, it'll be inside of that webinar link um, that has all the different webinars for the series and it'll have a recording of this. And I believe that you'll also be getting one in your email too, to have the recording. And when you get that email, you can just click on the thing, uh, the link, and it'll take you to the recording. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending.